We are back and just in time for game two as Clutch Gaming take on Team Liquid. And you know, there might only be a couple of weeks left, but come on down to the LCS studio and catch your favorite teams as they make the final push for playoffs. Tickets are available at riot.com slash LCS ticket. As you can see, we're worth being here in the crowd. And with all that out of the way, let's take a look at the players loading onto the rift for game two. On the blue side, it is Team Liquid. In the top lane, Impact. In the jungle, Xmithy. In mid, Jensen. Bot and support, Doublelift and Core JJ. And their coaches, Kane and Dodo. It's selecting red side for this match. It's going to be Clutch Gaming. In the top lane, Hooney. In the jungle, Lyra. Mid laner, Demonte. Bot and support going to be Piglet and Vulcan with Coach McStrag. And after what felt like a year of Hooney underperforming, the Clutch Gaming top lane has been putting in performances that honestly we expect from this world's finalist. Yeah, I mean, it's not just on stage. There's been more hype around Huni from pros, uh, talking about how well he's performing in scrims these days. And, you know, it's just in time as, as Clutch does have a chance to push for playoffs, though their remaining schedule is brutal. Certainly tough as he's looking to make that Dark Horse run opposite Impact, who has also been breaking out carries in the top lane. Yep, he has been picking up some wins on the Jace, but it doesn't feel must ban just yet. If that's kind of the team's intention, is putting pressure on some of these other squads going into playoffs to show that respect to it. And you can see in this featured matchup, some of the stats for these guys, like if you look especially at the kill participation for Huni, that is something that stands out to me as how much this team plays around him, how much they rely on Huni to be having a good game, to be involved for them to have success. And a reminder that a win here, of course, does lock TL one of their playoff buys that already in the top six, but would love to be top two. And of course, this is a team that Aspirations have always just said, want to finish first as often as mm -hmm. possible. Still our back-to-back -back defending champions, looking, for, looking to be the second team to win a third straight split. Yeah, I mean, when you take a squad that won back-to-back -back and you know dominated back-to-back- -back And you in, upgrade it. <laughs> exactly, and then you upgrade it, really the baseline for success is winning, doing that again, right? You have to do that again, or it's gotta be considered a failure when you were supposed to be even better than the previous squad. And that is the pressure that TL is faced with. They are somewhat chasing perfection here. They're sitting at 13 and one. They've been dominant throughout the whole year and yet not always getting the credit, uh, perhaps that they are due you know, for how good this team has been. And Clutch, it's been a, a rough one so far this spring, but if there's any sort of team that can Kind of knock Team Liquid down a single peg here in the game. It is someone as volatile as Clutch. We've seen like the likes of the Aurelia, which is yeah. banned away here away from Piglet. Also Cassio for Huni, most typically, but also good for Demonte will be taken off the board as well. Those are two really big bans. So I do think it is very intelligent that Kane and Dodo are showing the respect over to Clutch because almost all of Clutch's success recently has been through playing Aurelia Bot. They're actually 3-0 on the pick. Huni also picking up a pair of wins on the Casio, 2-0 on that. Uh, so certainly now Clutch has to show us that they are able to play more non-standard bot lanes if they want to continue playing that style. Because I think almost everyone will agree Clutch has looked by far at their best when they are doing that. The question remains, can Piglet play something like a Yasuo that can kind of plug and play in to a similar role that the Aurelia has taken for them? You can see that Clutch just kind of kept it standard. TK, Kaisa, and LeBlanc are their bands, so they could actually take Lissandra first pick, a champion that has seen a decent amount of play, but maybe hasn't been quite as popular, at least in this phase of the draft. I think once upon a time earlier in the split, she was taken on over almost everything. Still very powerful, although some of that has been toned down, but a very safe and flexible pick, if nothing else. Early Alistar it makes me think that, hey, maybe there is a possibility of still it being something like Yasuo in the bot lane if they feel the rest of the draft is appropriate for it. Uh, Vulcan, though, just in general, he has been a monster on the Alistar. This is most played by far, seven games throughout the split. I think he has had the most standout highlights on this of any support player in the league, uh, has really been on fire with some of his mechanical plays using the cap. Also adding some more flexibility here for Clutch. They do take Rise, which either Domonte or Cooney, or honestly Piglet could take it. I have seen it Rise bot from Piglet a long time ago. Certainly a player that's been around long enough to play a variety of different champions and roles. It looks like Liquid will keep it safe and standard here. Hovering Rek'Sai right now for Xsmithy. One of the players I believe in top five all-time plays on this champion in the LCS. Yeah, he's certainly a guy who has played it a lot throughout his career. You know, it will be interesting to actually see 
uh, how he's going to be able to perform on it. Because so far this season, it's been all about the Lee Sin for him. Pretty much any time Lee Sin is up, he grabs it. He has an absolute ton of plays on it. But all time, 39 plays on the Rek'Sai, his second most just behind the Gragas. So certainly very comfortable on it. And Brom down in the bot lane there for Core JJ. I think Team Liquid know that Clutch are the team that they're expecting something a little you know, different from. I think Team Liquid have kind of proven all split that we're good enough players, we understand the game. If we just play solid, it's very difficult to beat us. So the crowd are upset that it's not that spicy, but at least not a champion we see too often. Nope, the second pick of the season though for Lyra. He brought it out once earlier on. Uh, and I do think that it is the sort of style of champion that you want to see him playing. Something that when you think of Lyra at his best, you know, it fits in that kind of niche, right? It is about him being aggressive, him taking over games, being able to snowball. That is always where we have seen Lyra at his best. Uh, this is a fair bit of AP so far, though, drafted up for the team. Uh, we'll see if they want to have this rise top bot or mid. As you said, it certainly is a champion that has the ability to be flexed around. And Jinx and Ezreal taken off the table. Jinx, I think, certainly coming more back into the meta. We've seen Wild Turtle bringing it out a couple times. Also, if you are going to try to play something very aggressive in the bot lane, you don't want to be giving over Ezreal. Ezreal, especially into something like a potential Yasuo, Aurelia, and those sorts of picks, uh, is very, very safe. Can build the Ice Core and Gauntlet for some early armor and feel pretty comfortable farming out any of those sort of styles. You know, I'm curious, because there's a Gangplank ban from Liquid, and if Clutch don't take... Okay, they did it. I was going to say, if they don't take Lucian, what is their plan? But clearly they're just saying, you know what, Double Lift? We'll try and push you back as far as we can on Champions, and they'll just give Piglet the marksman. Although they could move these around as well. Yeah, certainly the ability to flex this around. I mean, Huni was the one who made Lucian top popular, but uh, I do think that it is going to be just Piglet playing the Lucian down in the bot lane. Certainly is a pick that he does like. He's gotten a hold of it one Ooh. time. We get the Bane from Double Lift. Let's go! Can only ban so many champions. <laughs> and this is something that we've seen come out around the world a little bit. Uzi recently playing it uh, against Fun Plus, you know, one of the top teams there. We actually saw Ruler using it to take down Griffin. Doublelift now gonna take a crack at it here. The Doublelift vein was something that had been really known as one of his best champions for a long time, and now gonna get to show it, it one more time. This is very likely Lissandra top now. Uh, this is going to be flexed up there. They bring the Syndra to the mid lane, so pretty cool stuff. We'll see how Impact does perform on the Lissandra, but I feel like that is very much his style of champion. Though it is not a, a pure tank, it is still something that is more of a pseudo frontliner, which I believe fits well in Impact's kind of style of play. Yep. He is someone that uses teleports incredibly well, engages incredibly well, manages space and team fights incredibly well, and that should suit him really uh, quite all right. This is going to be triple AP topside though for Clutch. Looking like it'll be Rise top, Oriana mid. So pretty atypical stuff here coming out. There is no real tank on the top side that can kind of, or, or even melee champion who can kind of build into an early hex drink or anything along those lines. Uh, but I certainly think we're going to have to see Double if grabbing something along the lines of an early QSS. Maybe Smithy grabs an early hex drinker, I think, which is going to be very effective. Uh, going up against a lot of these guys, there's a tremendous amount of CC there too, so things like Merc Treads will be very, very valuable for the TL squad, but all eyes are going to be on this bottom lane. Lucian versus Vayne, Piglet versus Doublelift, going to be hype. It's very curious to see that Piglet basically maneuvered himself to a point where he said, you know, I want to I wanna play a marksman against you. I want to play one of my best marksmen. I want to play your most played champion ever against you. And Doublelift has answered the call with Vayne, which is a very exciting pick here in the bot side. So Clutch have decided to play more standard versus Team Liquid. We'll see if that works out for them here, but whatever happens, it will be quite explosive. Yeah, it really will. I'm very excited for this one. And we'll see if they can hold on. You know, if Clutch can take a win here, they are certainly in such a rough position as the playoff race does go. They need to grab every win they possibly can here certainly do, and we don't need to repeat how tough their schedule is. Clutch just have to focus on one game at a time. But if they could take down Liquid, not only would they potentially upset things towards the top of the standings and push themselves to much needed wins they need for playoffs, but you have to feel if you can beat Liquid, the momentum is massive for a team like Clutch. Yeah, definitely the case. And they do have a, a pretty cool lineup to do it. Huni you know, has been very successful playing a lot of these mages top lane. 
you know, playing things uh, like the Rumble, like the Casio, that has really enabled him to be very, very successful. And he is in a range versus range matchup in the top lane. If Huni can get a big edge here for the squad, that may be a way in. Well, before we get to the rest of this game, we are going to throw it down to Ovali, who had a talk with Dodo. Thanks, guys. Dodo, a lot of people are excited to see Double Lift on this vein. What did he have to say to, or do to convince you to let him play it today? Uh, he just said, pick me Vayne and I'll carry it. But um, for, for uh, more serious <laughs> reasons, I think uh, Vayne is a really strong pick right now. And Double Lift was definitely confident in this pick. So we, we let him uh, just be confident and we'll see how it goes. Well, Dodo, thank you and best of luck to you. Back to you guys. I'm not surprised to hear Double Lift was confident in himself. I don't think anyone is surprised to hear that. But it is a pretty tough comp, I think, for him to play into. Rise, often pinpointed, is one of the, the real difficult champions to play into as a vein because it is that point and click CC. You can't be tumbling around in the invisible when you're actually just rune prison, rooted up. And you see that there is the combo coming in from Alistar. There is obviously a cocoon that can be hit there by Lyra. So he's going to have to be really good at actually dodging and avoiding a lot of the CC coming through uh, if he wants to be able to survive. But that being said, Vayne is an incredibly strong champion these days. I always kind of pinpoint, I think that the two item power spike is really where Vayne is just going to start lighting you up. Blade of the Rune King into Rage Blade is really the most popular standard build these days that you're seeing in solo queue. And when you do have those two items, Silver Bolt's procking every two autos just becomes an incredible amount of damage. You can absolutely shred through anyone. Well, I'm sure wherever you're watching, you're excited to see Double Lift Vayne, so make sure you're tagging at Elevel Esports with your viewing setup on Instagram with the hashtag HowILCS so we can see how you're checking out your favorite teams. Go Vayne spotting in real life. Get them all on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, well, Double Lift hoping to not be caught Vayne spotting this one, but we'll see how it's going to go. Is there is kind of a bit of a collapse coming through from the Orianna, and and Elise over towards this scuttle. Vulcan making the move here too, but we'll see if they want to fully commit to fighting for this. Smithy does have you know, the knockup and will be able to grab it. Yep, Smithy, Crab Whisperer just lures it away to the right-hand side of the map and is able to get it. But a lot of attention for that early jungle. Zick Smithy's looking mid. Demonte, ooh, gonna get knocked up. Flash after the Price Seeker, that will force the Summoner trade. Really nice job though from Smithy. You know, he hits level three off of that route who is able to actually go red to Krugs to scuttle. So he gets the early three. With that, he forces the flash out of Demonte. He's going to get the top lane scuttle as well. Uh, so really nice early pathing, and it's a great start. We'll see, though, if Lyra can kind of return something back here as he has snuck around, I think, a fair bit of the vision. I'm not sure if TL are aware that he's down here. And we'll see if they want to try to go for any sort of crazy dives. Vulcan does have Aftershock, so they're looking to try to set this up. Oh, Lyra just missed, but they are going to still go. Here's the TP in, but double if They want to try and take down the vein as soon as they can. He is ignited. There is first blood, and it will go over to Lyra, but his impact with a double root into the double stun by Jensen. Oh, oh, oh. TL answer in kind. And that's Jensen's 1,000th kill. 1,000 kills for Jensen in the regular season. One of the most successful mid laners of all time here in North America. Still crushing it in the LCS. And what an explosive way to do it. We talked about the TPs from Impact and you know how this sort of style of champion can suit him. And he's gonna be able to have a great TP here. We'll see this started up one more time. The Cocoon does miss, which gives you some hope that, hey, maybe TL can outplay it. Flashing the combo, but Vulcan saving the knockup. He was just using the headbutt, knowing that could be Flash. Follows the Flash for the knockup there on Double Lift, Piglet, and Lyra able to finish him off. But the response is there because that was such a fast TP from Impact. And Jensen having lane priority because he had the flash forced out on his opponent by Smithy, put them in a great position to respond and get two kills back. Important to note, Jensen did have to flash mm -hmm. to set up that play. So neither mid laner has that flash right now, but well worth it for the roam that Jensen and Impact were able to pull off. And Double Lift, sure, he died, but picks up two assists. Seems just fine right now. Exactly. It's not like it was Piglet getting first blood on the Lucian and then, okay, well, now you're screwed in the 1v1. No, that situation didn't happen whatsoever. Lyra got the kill, but Smithy is way ahead in the farm, so the gold advantage is not really there. You know, that's not a very big deal. Farm even in that bottom lane, and as long as the vein is farming even, you're going to always feel really good about your chances going forward into that mid and late game. Certainly so. As you can see, long swords everywhere here in the bot lane as Double Lift and Core are trying to get things pushed up towards the turret. 
attacking in with the rest of the map real quick. Uni has that tier, so getting ready to stack up and try and shove out the waves. Did also TP, I assume, back to lane, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and credit to Impact. I mean, the fact that he had the wave fully pushed up, he TP'd away from lane, his opponent TP'd back to lane. He's down 7 CS with three more to actually farm, so really that's not a big deal whatsoever. And Impact, you know, already having a great start to this game, and now no flash onto Monte. Surprise! Xmuthi does have Conqueror, it does proc there, but no one else to follow up as he walks back towards his jungler for safety. But you can see in the mid lane, Jensen is actually setting up a free, oh. so Double should be able to walk out. It was a nice little trade, but Smithy is actually zoning Demonte off, and it's a freeze in the mid lane there for Jensen, so he's denying farm from Demonte. Demonte has to walk the long way around, and now Smithy going to run into Lyra here. That's Cocoon. Rek'Sai actually taking a little too much damage. Can they find the rest of the follow-up? Repel down. Vulcan looking for something, but he doesn't have Flash to really find a combo with, so... Clutch will not be given any kills in. Will they dive again, though? This would be risky, but they're going to go for it. Yeah, they are in there. Pickle looking to try and get the kill. Double it full fall again. Vulcan this time able to grab the kill. Lyra ignited, but that's not enough. Yeah, well done there from Clutch. They are committed to keeping Doublelift down on this vein. Two deaths on him pre-seven minutes is pretty strong. And this time, Clutch doesn't lose anyone in the exchange. You know, able to make that very aggressive dive right in the face of three members because Doublelift was chunked down, because they had that early trade that worked out quite well for them. So this one will give them a bit of an edge. Ooh, Recall nice stop. Canceled. Piglet a little too far. We'll run into a control ward now. It looks like he'll take that out before heading back home. Demonte finally getting the wave pushed back in. Looks like Jensen recalled, so the freeze has been broken, but... Yeah, but it's a cannon wave, so Jensen really loses nothing on that. He loses one melee minion. Uh, and then he's going to be able to farm up this wave. He's going to end up plus 10 or so CS, probably off the exchange, as he can shove in this next wave very quickly because that is not a cannon wave. So you know, these little pressures that Smithy has put on, as well as some really nice minion wave management from Jensen, does result in an advantage for the mid lane, results in the early push. It means Jensen can roam down to this Infernal as well, as you see those minions are crashing in that mid lane turret. So this is all very well done here. TL. Yeah, 16 up right now, so watch as Demonte collects whatever he does, and that's basically your CS lead. Infernal Drake over to Team Liquid as Xmithy was able to solo that down pretty much. But Team Liquid doing well. Gold is pretty even thanks to the two kills Clutch have gotten on double lift. And now with that build toward a Cutlass quickly moving towards the Blade of the Ruin King for Piglet, it does feel like the dies will not stop. Because I think if you commit to trying to camp this vein, you have to really commit to it. Yeah, they, they really do have to do that. And it's, it's been these small, subtle things that have been really important so far this game. It's been pretty interesting to watch. Even Smithy stopping the recall on Piglet allows Doublelift to actually reset and grab his own Bill's Water without losing more minions really here, uh, besides maybe a couple. So some nice little plays have had a pretty big impact. And it's just resetting the blue buff there. Oh, no. <laughs> blue buff gets angry. Will... Angrily waddle back to the pit. <laughs> I swear, you do that one more time. Just one shot's in. We're going to take the grump. Looks like the blue will now be donated over. But Jensen having some fun, I suppose. As Impact is getting damage down onto this turret. Is Aftershock Lassandra, which we see a lot in both solo lanes. And that demolish enough to give Impact that turret plate. Yeah, going to be able to probably grab a second here as well. Huni can't really walk forward. And you can see even just triggering that vision plane is like, yep, he's still here because... Huni will have noticed that, so that alone means he can't walk forward because he doesn't know where Smithy is. Now Demonte under attack again. Take some damage back. Shockwave committed. Demonte really wants to chunk him down there. And you can see as soon as he showed mid, Huni walked straight back to the turret. But that was two turret plates down, and the CS evened out. When Impact was down 10 plus farm, you know, kind of before that. So these pressures that Smithy has been putting on, despite the fact that he's 0, zero, zero have actually been very, very impactful. So. Having a solid game here so far on the Rek'Sai. So two plates for Clutch now in the bottom side. And the CS lead for Piglet's looking pretty nice. That's about 20. Although with a wave to come, maybe call it 15. Fact and Huni continuing to battle back and forth, but not sure too much is going to happen without jungle intervention. So just some potion charges burnt and some mana pools diminish. I'm going to be interested to see what the full build is actually from Impact as well. You know, you had seen a lot of mid laners kind of skipping a mana item and going straight into things like Protobelt. 
uh, that, that sort of style of play, but you know, certainly some of the, the mana nerfs on Lissandra in the last couple patches ago have hurt a little bit. So may just be straight Ludens and Dizonias or something along those lines, and you know, trying to kind of maintain the wave here to match against Ryze, who is going to be building a lot of mana and certainly can keep turning up those spells. Vincent also holding his lead here in mid gets yet another wave to crash toward. As Demonte will move back to scoop that up. Has had to go for Merc Shred, though, for the threat of stuns out of Jensen. Does also have the cleanse, but just generally respecting the one-shot potential of Syndra. Yeah, exactly. There's also Braum stun. There's, you know, the, the, obviously the alt and the root from Lissandra. There's a lot of kind of CC that you have to worry about later on. Plus, a lot of mid laners just really put a lot of value in the move speed itself to be able to not only reduce, scatter the weak, the stun there, but just be able to dodge out on some of those skill shots. Public also with some free time here is going to stay for a little bit of plate One damage. Vayne is pretty good in these situations, so there is a plate over. Stays for a bit of extra damage as well here, but with Lucian returning with his now finished Blade of the Ruin King, matchup's going to tip once more. Two plates, so for double it has to feel good. Yeah, and he's actually really close to actually completing his own Blade of the Ruin King, so. Uh, may be able to get it. We'll see if he wants to kind of sell an item to actually uh, buy that up or if he even needs to. You know, with the two plates, CS is very, very even, so going to be feeling pretty good about that. And you know, that was just Clutch kind of being punished on a recall timing there. But Doublelift does get his base interrupted, and this means he's going to be kind of stuck laning, you know, down an item. And now this is why you see Smithy coming down, trying to protect from any potential dive, trying to guard Doublelift so that he can eventually get this recall off and try to retain item parity. Yep, even though the numbers look even right now, Doublelift has, you know, a 1600 gold just kind of hanging out, being unspent. Mm -hmm. So, let's see how long it takes him to get this base off. Of course, it's Piglet and Vulcan's job to force them against the turret and not let them base if they can. Yeah, the problem with that is, you know, Piglet, if he's spending up a lot of that mana, and this is not actually uh, a sorcery Lucian build. He doesn't have mana flow ban, so if you're trying to spam out those spells, you will run out of mana fairly quickly. That is why he bought an early fairy charm and was also sitting on um, biscuits, you know, having a little bit of extra mana, having a little bit of sustain there. They are moving down three members, though, potentially looking to die of JJ, but Smithy's still staying in the area. They should be able to hang out of this turret, and Doublet is running back with the Blade of the Rune King. Demolish procs though, so another plate over to the Clutch Gaming Duo. And as sort of expected, a ton of attention here being paid to bot lane. Clutch do have those few kills. Lira though wrapping around mid. Demonte looking for the shockwave, does not quite land it. Cocoon misses as well. Jensen just casually duking around all the skill shots. I mean, that's kind of the Jensen trademark. He's so good at these little dodge outs. He knows exactly the ranges that all these spells have. He knows exactly you know, when to move, which ways to move. He's always been such a hard player to actually hit with skill shots. And certainly, anytime I think of this player, I think of his laning prowess, and I think of his ability to avoid all those skill shots. And it does feel like some of that has been quietened, given how strong his team is overall. And he's played some different champions, a different styles. He's currently getting Cocoon, but does insta-cleanse out and make sure TL can get the Drake for themselves as they do collect the Cloud. But I think, you know, Jensen is somewhat fluent under the radar because of the total power of this team, but still has had an excellent season for himself on Team Liquid. Yeah, and I think also because of his faith in some of his teammates, he doesn't necessarily feel like he needs to press as much, right? He's saying, well, yeah, I have double on my team. It's okay uh, if I don't take a risky fight to try to look for a solo kill because I know... Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. As you see, PTA proc, Braum stun proc, and Silver Bolt proc all in the same auto there, and that is what that huge chunk is coming from Piglet now. In some danger here. Double he... he wants it. He yeah. wants to just shoot him a few more times. As you can see, the plate gold actually ended up even despite the early pressure out of clutch. Yeah, and the fact that you know it's TL that has taken both of the dragons when they are the ones with the vein against the Lucian also speaks to how well things are going. And Demonte, here is a Smithy again. Let's have his thumbs with the ulti from Jensen. Far too late for Demonte to flash. Yep, he flashes, but the ult was already off, and Smithy still had the Rek'Sai ultimate available, even if he didn't die to that. So certainly more than enough to overkill him. Now they're going to just take the Rift Herald. TL really playing this very textbook. They're protecting Double Lift enough so that matchup is stabilized. They're taking all the neutral objectives. Smithy just seems to be able to pressure mid lane with ease every time he walks by Demonte. It feels like Demonte has to give him more than Smithy is spending. So really, you're seeing the prowess 
of TL and Smithy as a jungler. Have to agree, as Piglet's still in trouble once again. Blade of the Ruin King used for a bit of extra distance to create away from Claw JJ. Rift Herald, though, does go down, and Smithy will collect the eye. They're gonna roam down, but should be able to tunnel to safety. Does get out. And now Jensen just shoving down the minions once again, back into the turret, continuing to build that CS lead. Has the Ludens already finished alongside the Sword Shoes, so very strong on this Syndra as well. Really is, and there's going to be a tremendous amount of magic damage burst coming out from this TL team that you're also going to have to respect on the side of Butch. If you do not have Cleanse, if you do not have QSS, you get ulted by Impact, who has a Ludens, and Lissandra is going to put a lot of upfront damage, and then you get ulted by Jensen, you're probably just dead from full, right? So that is a tremendous amount of damage from these two players that are both sitting on Ludens plus some pieces, and that is something you're going to have to be really worried about, especially in combination with the burst damage and execute that's on the Rek'Sai ultimate. So they really do have some powerful dive and a lot of CC to boot. You can see Huni though, is not without trying to make some waves happen here in the top lane. He does have his stuff charging up, he does have his Merc Treads also finished, and Ryze is a threat that develops pretty consistently as the game goes on. Yeah. So every time Impact leaves, Huni can potentially just shove down the waves and get structure damage done, or even TP. Try and find a team fight for himself. And they may go for this. We do know Lyra's over the wall. He could look for some sort of flash to if they feel like they can go for it. Instantly, there from Core JJ moves the Guardian over, over, Unbreakable up, and goes a little awkwardly, but Kaling doesn't quite connect anyway, so it looked like enough to keep Double Lift safe, and I think that's going to be Dive called off for Clutch. Although Lyra now into a different piece of brush. Core JJ checked the first one, but Lyra's already out of there. He's spending a lot of time around here, and if Double Lift steps up, he could easily die. And we'll see. They know they, they ha don't have eyes on this jungler and haven't seen him for quite some time. So this should just be the turret. I think that we'll see Doublelift and them back off. But they are electing to try to act. They're actually just going forward. Yeah, wow. Doublelift in a 1v3. He fancies it. Pump final hour already and forces them away. Does get cocooned, but who protect his turret? Yeah, I mean, pretty well played because they know the jungler and mid laner are actually roaming down. So he just kind of feigns the strength, goes forward, chunks them out. And Doublelift expends the final hour, but keeps the turret alive chunks them down, and they now have the ability with double of healing back up to potentially push Clutch off of their own turret. I mean, with how low Piglet and Vulcan are, this doesn't seem that safe to stay. Claw JJ still with his ulti. Yeah, I agree. Demolishes up. They're going to proc it and just try and take the turret down first. Not quite enough time charged up, I don't think. Condemn away there onto Vulcan. Double lift, keeping it safe. Yep, he was trying to actually time the Condemn with a potential engage. You know, expecting perhaps the headbutt to come through. One of the things you can do on Vayne is actually buffering your Condemn. So when someone is out of range and you're expecting them to flash engage, you put your mouse on them, you press E. If they flash, they'll be instantly Condemned. And you can continually cancel that input. Ulti there also by impact onto Huni, but Huni gonna pop his shield. His Seraphs did transform. Actually feeling pretty good in this 1v1. Yeah, nicely done from Huni. I mean, he's been trying to eke out these advantages. He's up almost 30 CS, despite, remember, Huni being zoned off of a couple waves thanks to some pressure from Smithy. So Huni's certainly getting the better of Impact in this 1v1, and we'll see. Now that Impact has no ultimate, can Huni actually push him off here? Smithy also chasing Demonte once more, flashes the Shockwave, and there's Jensen finds the stun, and that's just so easy. Demonte just getting picked on this game by Smithy and Jensen. Their pressure around mid lane has been so damn good. Cooney! Oh, the solo kill potentially. But the Q misses the second one and he's oh, dead! No. Impact dodges everything and Hooney can't quite finish uh, off the duel. Hooney was pressing. He feels the need to get something done up there. His team is falling behind, to be fair. But he had a 30 plus CS advantage before that. Instead, Misses the Qs, takes too many tower shots. He gets solo killed by Impact, who will now even be able to get some damage down on the turret himself and potentially even take that down. That's all three turrets falling within the span of about 30 seconds there. TL, now 4,000 plus gold ahead, double Infernal, add in the Wind Dragon as well, and oh my god, they were in full control of this one. This play, though, was real slick by Smithy. Yep, he spotted them with the Tremor Sense, walking through, saw him on the ward as well, flashes out of range of the ultimate pull-in, you know, that Shockwave, and then gets the knock-up, finishes them off. Oh, Huni my goodness. goes in with the Realm Warp, and it looked like the initial play was going to work. Ooh, what a flash. Yeah, that flash was so good from Impact. Misses two more Qs. <sighs> Huni just really felt like that's one of those plays where the initial play doesn't work, and you're like, no, screw it, I have to get this guy. I got to kill him.
Does not work out for him though. He gets killed off and now this is impact on two items. Sitting pretty. Honey's advantage really, there's, there's nothing there. Despite being up in farm, there's a couple kills on the side of impact, so he's ahead in gold. Yep, and now Team Liquid in general up 4,000 gold here in this mm -hmm. game. Have double lift closing in pretty quickly on his Rage Blade and transfer to top lane to try and get the minions over here as Hoonies back down to the bot lane to try and finish off that tower. This is actually pretty interesting from Piglet, seeing the BF picked up on top of pieces of what is likely a rapid fire. So I'm not sure if he's just going to be going straight into an IE here now and, and sitting on those pieces, or if he just had 1300 gold and wanted the additional AD, and then will still finish the shoot, then go IE. But this is not going to be the standard kind of Blade of the Rune King Black Cleaver style build. This is a more heavily scaling, higher DPS build that he is going to be going for. And it's certainly a lot less typical to see it. Tell that both teams, though, are staying very active around the map. Lyra does get spotted there. Smithy has done an exquisite job all game long, pressuring lanes and tracking everyone on the clutch side. And I think the build is smart from Smithy as well, right? He did make that pit stop that we talked about in Champ Select for Hex Drinker. And I think grabbing that against the Elise, Rise, Orianna is going to be very intelligent. And we can see Lock is going to be built up here from 4JJ. You know, that is going to really help against any potential burst. And likely we'll see a third item QSS from Double Lift. We would not be surprised to see even more kind of put into the match resistance after that. You can go for things like Wits End or even a Maw. Uh, I think that can be a pretty strong way to go as they really aren't going to need to do more DPS. Multi there, Smithy again just hunting members of Clutch Gaming. He'll grab a second kill for himself. Yeah, double lift in the 1v3 here. Yeah, we're going to take down Piglet, flashes out of the way. Has a Scuttle Crab, but there's Flash Order from Piglet to finish it off does end up trading, you know, two summoners for three. So a good attempt there from Double trying to battle back, but Clutch are the ones that do get the pick. And Ooh, denied by Jensen. Now. now Lyra are gonna get ulted. Shockwave lands, but only hits Core JJ. Now Demonte in trouble, has to flash out. The ult there from Core won't quite connect. Piglet does grab the turret in top side and moves back towards his teammates as Demonte will get out safely, but Impact still pressuring turrets, will proc demolish once again. Yep, pressuring this turret and we saw there's not really any outplay for Hooney when you're going to get ulted up and you don't have QSS, you don't have cleanse. And it just gets locked down by Impact. And Impact plus Smithy have more than enough damage to burst you out. So now it is TL going to be knocking down a mid lane tier two. Full control over this game. And despite the fact that Clutch has a lot of vision around that there and don't really have a lot of ability to actually contest in that area if the numbers are even. This feels like another clean game from Liquid. Every lane looks good. The lanes that did fall behind have been equalized pretty easily. And this gank, very yeah. simple. There's just no way out for him. There's no outplaying that, honestly. Uh, he's going to get locked down, burst out, and then double it in the potential 1v3 here, looking to try to knock down Piglet. Does force out the heal, flashes away from Lear, who flashed, at least getting three summoners, so made them work for it. But he does go down. And the Vayne without those summoners can be quite vulnerable. So Rage Blade is complete, though, and that is really a scary time for his opponents because if you can get that rage blade stacked and you are untouched in a team fight if you can be rolling around and getting that damage out every two autos for the silver bolt proc means you are destroying everyone yeah maybe double if just thinking you know what it didn't work last time in the 1v3 but maybe now <laughs> with the rage blade finish maybe when you have a qss that's what i'll say yeah that's the, probably the, the more obvious one yeah the mr is just so effective right we can see banshee's veil grabbed from jensen as well they are going for a lot of these optimizations. And it might be a Banshee's Veil as well for Impact, but I do think Zonia is also a, a fantastic option for him there, uh, as we know how effective that can be to create space uh, for this Lissandra. And now they're kind of moving in, you know, moving Impact out into a side lane. They're putting Jensen in the mid lane, and they can have double lift in this position where as you get higher level, you can actually just solo split push. You're picking up more experience, more solo gold, maximizing your farm on this Vayne, who can really handle herself very well in the one Four straight drakes as well here for Team Liquid. They continue to mount their advantage. That gold lead is not ballooned too much, but it just feels like they're in so much control of this game. Yeah. And it really has been just amazing to watch how good Team Liquid have looked almost all split long. I think back to last year, they had some small slumps in the center of their split. 
And this time it doesn't even feel like that really oh. happened to them. TP coming in from behind Both here. The double pulverize, they're jumping on, they will take down the Cinder. That's Jensen dead. Ulti there from Core JJ finds a pretty good set of knockoffs and double is left to free hit here in the front of the fight. And Ulti from Impact will steal the rest of the team fight. Damage back down, but I think they'll be able to finish off the kills. Hooney oh, does oh, die. Oh. That's an ace for Team Liquid. They get the five for three there. The Lissandra passive actually getting a lot of work done too as everyone was stacked up. Jensen got burst out, but here is the play. The TP was coming in from Impact from behind, but Clutch sees it. They turn it. They just absolutely light up Jensen. Getting that kill down was massive, but then Impact AOEing them down. You can see the first man gets knocked down. The Lissandra passives start procking out. Double just not expecting the damage from Hooney, as there was no in between him and Hooney, and Hooney is on a death cap, so he turns, he fires, he explodes Double, but. A QSS purchased up after that fight means it's going to be harder to get that pick onto double if next time. And if Jensen didn't die at the beginning of that fight, it looks even more one-sided. So certainly, Clutch have got to be very, very careful about tracking Impact, tracking these potential flank wards, as that was a great TP again from Impact. And he's had two real bangers this game. Yeah, top damage in the fight as well. So playing exceptionally on the Lissandra so far. From that first TP to that last flank has really just been great all game long. If there is hope though for Clutch, it is the man in their top lane, Cooney on the rise. You mentioned has the early death cap, mm -hmm. maybe building something like a void here. So yeah. trying to maximize a lot of that DPS. And Rise is a champion that when left untouched, either in side lanes or in team fights, can win the game for you. Certainly can, and there is no real true tank to kind of block a lot of the rise damage, so it's going to fall a lot on Core JJ. He has got to be very on point with his positioning, standing in between the rise and the rise potential target, because we know the rise cues are aligned skill shots, so you cannot hit around someone, so to speak. So you really have to be cognizant about who's actually getting hit up there, because it will be rise split pushing in the side lane, but double it with his rage blade complete straight onto the Baron, and Vayne can kill this in a hurry. They know though, and Jensen and Impact also trying to zone out of the way. Yo. He's gonna start the fight off. Impact again finds the engage on the two. Cell bolts there. Redemption now for Clutch to try and save themselves. Impact finally dies and actually gets shot down. Now it's Smithy. He's caught out on the wrong side. They need their jungler alive with Baron on the table, but he does tunnel out to safety. Yeah, a lot of bursts coming through there from Clutch as this time Impact not able to get the Zonias off after the self ultimate does get burst down. A shutdown for Clutch as the response CP came through from Hooney. Well done by them. That could have been the straw that breaks the camel's back as Clutch potentially could have lost a Baron off that play had it gone well for TL. Uh, but they do hold strong. They get a shutdown. They stabilize it by themselves a little bit more time. So here this is one more time. The reason I question this engage is because if you look how far away Double Lift and Core JJ are, you know, they are not really able to, to kind of get involved in the fight at all. Double Lift just now is arriving and there's a calling in his face. He can't really walk forward through that corridor. Impact is already dead. So the opportunity was there for Impact, but the rest of the members could not follow up as quickly. They cannot necessarily get over that wall and get to you that fast. So certainly have to make sure that they're all on the same page when looking for those sorts of fights. Clutch, though, will be happy to extend the game out a little longer. Actually, on the attack right now, looking for this mid lane out of turret. Demonte with the ball in position is always good in a siege. And Piglet putting just enough shots in to take down the turret. Needs one more, does grab it. His impact again, flash root finds only Demonte, who does get ulti, but he cleanses out of there. Falcon getting low, he will die to double him. And that's actually absolute rampage there as Hooney does take out Core JJ, but there's Lyra getting taken out. Hooney now gonna get chased down and can't really do too much in some sort of 1v4. Good shot uh, there by double on the blast cone. He just chases down Hooney and grabs the shutdown. Team Liquid gonna be the Baron. They're gonna go straight for it. Huge fight from TL. Not losing any confidence off that fails on Geek from Impact before in the topside jungle. Impact nails it this time, catching multiple members as he goes in. Demonte's the only one alive, and they've got Baron Pastry. Well, Demonte, not even gonna bother. Yeah. That will just be Baron over to Team Liquid. So again, that gold leader stayed somewhat stable despite how ahead TL have been. Don't forget their four Drakes as the fifth is coming up in 10 seconds, but add a Baron to that tally. And this gold lead is going to start to balloon quickly. It really is. So here it is one more time. Impact out of vision, over the wall, claws in, flash W, catching Demonte, hits the ult onto him, you know, getting that AoE damage through. Zonius comes out, 
Double stitches unleashed, flashing forward, and on the side in essentially what is a 1v2, 1v1 situation, Smithy does take down Lyra, and then they're able to chase out, take down Huni. You can see Rageblade fully stacked. Every two autos, you will get a Silver Bolt proc, and you will put out insane amounts of damage here. And it's straight to the Mercurial for double. If he knows that MR is going to be very effective, and he's playing it safe, and will be able to be a terror. If they can't burst him down, I don't think Clutch can win a fight. Now actually sieging onto this turret, usually kind of tough to do with a vein, but they're there first and Clutch just no defense to speak of. Yep, they'll be able to knock that down very easily and Smithy over on the side may want to try to get that wave going for them. Uh, you can see they're pinging onto the wave, so I think they actually want this bottom wave uh, to split push. And you can see this down here. They're allowing this to stack and that will kind of push forward on that side of the map. And the hope is that that kind of arrives at the same time as you're pressuring elsewhere so they can crash at an equal time. And in goes Vulcan with the Realm Orb. Yep, Vulcan and Huni trying to find the catch, but TL split off from mid lane and there is no engage to be found for Clutch. And they now have impact out in the top lane, so they're definitely not looking to fight right now. They're looking to try to get waves going on three lanes, really shove this up, try to utilize that Baron buff as, as best as they possibly can. They really want to try to maximize the gold lead with this because they have done a fantastic job getting all of those neutral objectives, every dragon, grabbing the Rift Herald, grabbing the Baron, but they want to extend the gold lead uh, to a point where it is now unassailable. And this is their timing here as the Baron buff minions are coming forward. You can see the tier two is going to be starting to get sieged by impact at the same time as they're kind of walking up to this inhibitor tower. And the mid lane has Baron minions coming into. Clutch do have items in the right places. They've got basically three carries who have three items, but it is kind of the issue around the map with this Baron especially that's causing more issues. Huni though, about the 1v1 impact as he looks to dive under the turret. Here's Ix Smithy as well, but Huni just flashing out of the way. Ix Smithy gonna get rooted down. They will get the kill. There's the second over to Huni as Clutch. Able to find a few kills, but double if not done here in bot lane. Does take down the turret. Is rapidly trying to shoot down this in here, but will not be able to finish it off. That was not a fight they needed to force as Impact tries to go in and Huni just outplays them. He had the stopwatch. They weren't even close to taking him down in that 2v1. Huni easily able to survive. And even without all those extra members coming in, I think Huni would have had the 1v2. Look how low Impact is. He's full HP. He pre stopwatches the flash knock up there from Smithy. And I think Huni had this 1v2. Easy peasy. So well played to him. He has really been the game changer for this clutch team, but with everywhere else really starting to struggle, it has not yet been enough. And it's another dragon now going the way of TL. Five dragons to their name before the potential first elder comes up. They are still in the driver's seat. Yeah, for all of the strong individual play being showcased by Clutch, but especially by Huni, Team Liquid has built up a lead that looks almost insurmountable for Clutch. And this is a team that does not drop the ball often when they're ahead. No, they, they really don't at all. You know, their one loss really was uh, kind of A, some drafting issues. Also, a well-played game by TSM, certainly. Uh, but it was that first pick, York that really did not work out for them at all. It was also some pretty poor decision-making in the early game that got them quite behind. And TSM had a fantastic game, was able to close that one out. But that is the one blip on the radar, really, here for TL. It is worth mentioning, though, TL does have a matchup coming up against TSM, who was the one team to beat them, and that is really their toughest opponent remaining as they have made easy work of pretty much everyone else in the league. Yeah, it's been a similar story for Team Liquid ever since the franchise era, but this team is just unbelievably good, and it's looking to really shut the door once more on Clutch, who desperately need every win they can claw out of any team's hands. Team Liquid do not give them over kindly, but Cooney is making his best possible case yeah. to try and carry the game. I mean, Clutch has to play TL, TSM, C9, and Golden Guardians, if I recall. So, you know, potentially the four best teams in the league, you know, depending on who you're going to talk to for that fourth spot, but certainly number one, two, and three in the standing. So incredibly hard strike to the schedule. And they need to be picking up these wins. You have to imagine you probably can't get in the playoffs without at least eight, and even that might not get you there. So. You're not a lot of ground to give for these teams. Well, again, they're going to try something here with Vulcan. Realm Warp potentially could be in play. We have the ball. But Amante able to speed up the cow with some dissonance as well. So Clutch know they have options to try and stop fights. If they have damage, if they can start good fights. But Liquid are a team that give very few opportunities and create many for themselves. That's kind of why they're the best team in the league. As Baron is back up in 45 seconds, Elder Dragon is spawning in a few minutes. And Team Liquid say, you know what? 
We did enough damage. No need to rush down for these inhibs just yet. Happy to play it patient and just ride out the rest of the game. Yep, and Doublelift now sitting on that fourth completed item. He does have an 800 gold bounty, and I want to play safe, not donate that over. With the PD coming through, as well as the Mercurial for that QSS, uh, he's going to have a lot of safety. Hey, they found Hooney. Good pick to try and get, but Volk going to keep them out of the way. Core JJ finds a knockup with the Glacial Fissure, and Doublelift slays him where he stands. Now Volk is trying to piece it. There you go. The Shockwave finds one, but it's only impact, and still Doublelift. Maybe forced back Jensen with a great stun. Lyra forced to flash out to avoid the spear and certain death. Yeah, good shockwave from Demonte to stop the additional chase as he pulls in multiple members there, you know, forcing them to respect any potential damage running through that corridor, but it is still a two for one. It is still TL going over to that Baron and Doublelift can kill this so incredibly fast. This needs Core JJ or someone to tank it so he doesn't have the damage reduction debuff on him from that Baron. And they are shredding this, but they was spotted out by Clutch and I don't think TL want to opt into any potential 50-50s at this point. Just trying for some picks here. Lyra will be seen by the Prey Seeker. Like Smithy back in over the pit, but I think maybe just clearing some vision rather than starting the Baron up again. Rudy will respawn in five seconds. Tolkien is back out on the map, so Clutch lose a couple, but TL will force them back into the pit. Yeah, and I mean, this is one of the strengths of Vayne as well, right? You really only need Vayne plus one to be able to actually take down this Baron so the other members can zone, the other members can kind of try to create these zones of control. Huni is going to be TPing over, so they will pull off, and they're looking for a fight. So far away, Vulcan is low. Impact around the other side again with the flanking. Smithy finds the execute onto Vulcan. Already a 4v5 in favor of Team Liquid. And again, they take the kill. They back off. No need to overforce with the jungle up around something like Baron. Just start it again and force them to come right back around. Yep, and I mean, they have the bot wave pushing. You can see down in the bot wave, that is pushing up. There's a, that's going to be forcing the inhibitor. There's a wave stack here as well. So there is pressure all across the map before they go to this. They have vision in the area. TL have checked all the boxes. We'll see if they want to try to turn and fight here, though. Lyra, goes Lyra. Potential. Nope. Deal. Can't make his way in. Baron over to Team Liquid. They are very good students, always doing their homework before objectives, Azale. Yeah, and, and that's really what you want to see, right? They are taking low risk, high percentage plays. Uh, they are getting a lot of out, out of it. And, you know, with the Baron buff, five dragons through their name, that inhibitor just barely going to be saved by Piglet. Is that what's pushing in? This Elder is so massive for both teams. Clutch can't really give this over, or the game is probably just 100% done. But at the same time, they have to risk a lot to try to take it, and they get very little reward because they have no dragon stacks to amp it up. They've already started it too. Huni and Lyra were trying something very sneaky, but it did not work out. Dead Team Liquid will force them to come to the objective and pick a team fight that Clutch are very unlikely to win. Calling out there, engaging, and Impact starts it up. Big Smithy follows in, Core JJ already taking down Lyra, Impact in the watches, double it, leaps over the wall and just shreds Piglet to pieces. That is gonna be it, as Hooney, the last man standing for Clutch, will buy what time he can in stasis. But the Wizard will fall, that's an ace for Liquid, and they'll rush towards the Dragon, slash the Nexus. Yep, double it's just gonna run it down. This should be able to be an easy closeout. They are staying on the Elder, which makes me feel like like, they're not 100% sure they can close, but I feel like they can pretty comfortably here. Maybe just kind of trying to add a little bit of style to the substance as Double they're close it out. believes they can as he has started shredding down the Nexus turrets. He's got no teammates yeah. anywhere, but it just doesn't matter. Double if <laughs> on the vein, solo ending the game, channels a recall in front of the Nexus just to be a cheeky boy. But that will be it. Team Liquid take down Clutch. Yeah, they're just styling on him. Grab the Elder, end the game. Why not take it all? TL get every neutral objective the whole game through. Every Dragon, Elder, Rift Herald, Baron. And they were in full control of this one. Very impressive showing once again. Have to give a lot of credit, I think, to Smithy, who was so good with the pressure he was putting on specifically around mid lane, but really covering the side lanes very well while taking down all these neutral objectives. TL certainly looking in fine form today. I have to agree. I guess that's the Pokemon. We take all the monsters off the map because <laughs> they got the Rift Herald too, right? So TL, not a perfect game, but hey, this is the team that's been chasing it all split long, and we'll call that pretty close as they win yet another decisive game. And it's Impact showing another pick that this one, I think, is something people maybe have to worry about a little bit more. You know, to Huni's credit, Huni was certainly winning in that 1v1. He was getting laning advantages, but an overreaching Impact punishes him. And Impact did have some very strong engages on the Lissandra. You know, had some that 
miss the mark a little bit here too, but uh, this is a pick that I think really does kind of fit his style of play. He can play the engage, he can play the map, uh, and really play as that kind of pseudo front line where he's gonna shine. And it feels like, again, all the, all the pieces for Team Liquid are there. They play the map well. They've got great enabling players when you think of their top laner and their jungler. They've got Uncle JJ. Sorry, somehow forgot. Probably the number one MVP candidate. Don't mind me. He's new to the league. And then, of course, two great carries between Jensen and Doublelift. It is a team that feels like they have it all. And it's just a matter of winning another split. And beyond who knows, to hear more about that showing note, the Team Liquid duo are standing by for an interview. Thanks, guys. I am here with Doublelift and Cord JJ. Guys, congratulations on the win. And with this win, locking a bye for playoffs. But first off, Doublelift, why are you so BM, man? <laughs> Wait, I'm not. I'm not. My team actually is BM. They're like, let's do Elder and, and let him end by himself. So they're making me do all the work. Yeah, OK. Well, for you, what was it like? Because you finally got to lock in Vayne on the main stage, and then Clutch Gaming just did, they didn't want to let you have it. <laughs> yeah, they were horny for me that whole game. It was. <laughs> It was like, I, I can't play League of Legends, uh, but yeah, I, my biggest regret is mostly just like, my KDA is ruined now. It must have been nice to play mid and top that game because Elise was bought for 15 minutes. Yeah, I think also enemy want to kill Peter and Peter want to kill himself. <laughs> yeah, so it was a really hard game. It's true. But, <laughs> Now, for you specifically, you are basically babysitting him in the bot lane. You have to protect him and say, it's okay, I'll try to get you kills. What was that like for you? Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't save my baby today. <laughs> yeah. Well, baby boy, you play FlyQuest tomorrow, and Turtle has had some pretty good games on Jinx. What do you think about that? Uh, Turtle's playing well. He always plays well, actually. I feel like he goes under the radar a lot since he's not on like the winning team, but... Yeah, they have a good bot lane, an aggressive bot lane, and uh, it should be, like, I think a closer game than this one. All right, well, guys, thank you guys so much for an always entertaining interview. Best of luck to you for the rest of the week. State Farm Analyst Desks, what do you guys think about the game? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we think that Doublelift recalled in front of the Nexus uh, and said, what do you mean? I'm not bad, man. Or they told me to do stuff. Okay, sure thing, Peter. Yeah, buddy, keep telling yourself that. Yeah, keep telling yourself that. Uh, a lot of interesting things happened, of course. We had Xmithy do a lot of work in the mid lane. We had uh, Lyra's Elise try to put a lot of pressure down bot lane. Some worked, some didn't, certainly. Interesting one, a uh, key thing to point out here is you guys were really talking about, before we got on camera, uh, picking Vayne once you see the Lucian bot lane, uh, fairly cocky. Yeah, I, I didn't love that, and I mean, it felt like a little bit wanting to get revenge on Piglet for some of the times that he might have picked Vayne into him, but it's, it's a bit of a difficult lane and combined with like the early elise pressure which you've already seen it's asking to get dove frequently and i'm you're saying i'm gonna outplay that and that's what happened and i know there were some other thoughts about the elise pick in general though right yeah well this dive why don't you wait for vulcan to lead this you have level three advantage it'd be so amazing but instead it's just a complete botched execution of Clutch Gaming, like this was such a good idea. I loved seeing this. This is what I expected of Elise. Even if they were a full HP level three, doesn't matter. But they get punished brutally as a result of it. And just imagine how much more different this game would have been if this didn't happen. By the way, also call that Jensen would get first blood. Yeah, on you the called Lyra. it on Lyra. Oh, you did call it. Getting that thousand kills. And it was one of those things where like once that goes wrong, like it's a lot harder to keep making things go right. Like this dive, they do actually pull this one out because they get onto Smithy, force him away, and then it's too hard to save Doublelift from this point, so he's gonna drop. But at this point, it's two for two in the bot lane when it could easily be three for O. Oh. And you have a winning topside matchup that eventually just starts outscaling the Lissandra. You have hopefully what's an even mid lane matchup, maybe down a little bit of pressure, and you're yeah. supposed to be blowing this bot lane up, and their execution was just a little too far off to actually snowball the early game. Right. Yeah. And there's, what I want to talk about this game is a lot about the Rek'Sai. Mm -hmm. Being a mid laner myself, I've been camped like that, and Demonte was not having a good time. I believe that Rek'Sai burned his flash, ganked him multiple times, killed him multiple times, and it feels really bad, because if you're trying to pressure bottom, but your mid lane's getting pushed in, that means the enemy mid laner is going to come down and stop your pressure. So I like the game plan from Clutch Gaming, but they need to make sure that their mid laner can't keep roaming down to stop these plays. You saw Syndra come down at level four, change the pace of the game, and it doesn't really work if you don't have mid control when you're trying to control the side blades. You need that control for mid. You always gotta have mid pressure, but I do think that Xmithy did a great job, and some of it was mm -hmm. the, on the fault. You just saw the guy fight with your team for the Scuttle Crab, so burning this flash here was something yep. that I think the Monte could have avoided, but every other time it's just Xmithy knowing I have an easy route on the Monte. He doesn't even expect this. Bam, you're right there. 
Honestly, I think the Monte would have died just to its Smithy alone with a fully charged Fury E. And then once again, another easy kill onto the Orianna. And this is just the power of a mid laner that can set you up and having a Rek'Sai that can also transition so well into the team. Right, and just a big thing to notice with this is it's a giant mental game. Their jungler has been camping me. Now I'm upset at that jungler. You'll see him burning ultimates throughout the lane phase to try and get back at him. They're kind of like, hey, stop camping me, dude. But it doesn't happen, and Smithy just basically walks all over to Has that worked with you when you throw out the abilities? Like, you know what? I've ah. definitely done that before where a jungler camped me a lot. I'm like, all right, I hate this guy. I'm just going to use everything on him, ignite him, try and kill him. Yep. And usually it never works out in my favor. But it's definitely a mental game thing that does happen. But it feels you, good. It feels good to <laughs> some damage. But the jungler is killing me, and I'm not killing him, so it feels bad. And the crazy thing was in that fight, I think it was a four for three. So it was a really close game. And that's after Huni failed dive top and killed himself. That's after all this Demonte stuff. And it's after their bot lane failed to make their plays work. So I think yeah. if you look at like, if you played 5% better this game, you probably actually win as Clutch. Well, yeah. maybe not win, because Team Liquid's very hard to actually take down. But they have a much more difficult job of actually coming back in that game. Yeah, I want to uh, call back out. We had the graphic earlier, but the fact that Xmithy had a uh, lower proximity to Jensen at 14.3 than Lyra had to Vulcan down in the bottom lane at 16.5. So less time spent, and you saw three or four kills come through, flashes burn that like maybe friend of the Rome to bot lane earlier, as you are mentioning, mm -hmm. getting all that pressure while you're seeing Lyra's like foible dives. So well, the first one is a two for one against well, them. I also think that you can look at that the other way where Doublelift is saying, oh, I'm getting camped by Elise. She's down here for 15 minutes. If he's feeling that way and the proximity is almost the same to Exmithian in mid lane, how's Demonte feeling? Yeah. You got yeah. two people down there. This is now, oh, well, all right, I'm mid lane alone mm -hmm. against Syndra Rex. I've got nobody. What am I going to do? Right. Yeah. And they don't even win that 2v2 either. You have triple mages on the red side versus an 80 jungler and double mage. So everyone on the left side can go Merc Treads, mm -hmm. everyone on the right side cannot, because it makes it a lot more awkward. And it's just, you don't win that 2v2 anyway. Yeah, like you said, you were talking about potentially Jarvan instead. Equally strong level 2 and level 3 type ganks. Maybe doesn't get out of the turret quite as easily, but then transitions much better in the mid to late game, where Alira became completely useless. Yeah, in the you're already fights. playing double mage. Uh, yeah, de definitely agree. Either way, that's the way it happens. Clutch Gaming had a hard schedule. There's the first loss, kind of expected. That does it for us with game 2. Echo Fox and Cloud9 face off next when we return. First blood, and it will go over to Lyra, but his impact with a double root into the double stun by Jensen. Oh, he will oh, answer in kind. Here is a smithy again. Let's have his subs with there's the ulti from Jensen. Hooney. Oh, the solo kill potentially. But the Q misses the second one, and he's oh, dead. No. His impact again, flash root finds only Demonte, who does get ulti, but he cleanses out of there. Vulcan getting low, he will die to double lift, and that's actually absolute rampage. Double lift on the vein, solo ending the game, channels a recall in front of the Nexus, just to be a cheeky boy. They said you can't upgrade a laptop, and they said you can't get enough power from a laptop. So we built a laptop that does all that and more. The new Alienware Area 51M is now the world's most powerful and upgradable gaming laptop, featuring upgradable and overclockable desktop Intel Core processor and graphics by NVIDIA with a revolutionary show-stopping design. Welcome to a new era.